So now let's move into how NEPA, SEPA applies as we're talking about this particular project. Now I want to preface this saying, in this presentation we are not going to be going over a number of specific and technical details associated with this project. We'll get, give a, an overview of what some of the key um, aspects of the project are. The focus is on how you will be participating uh, and hopefully want to be participating in the public process for scoping. But the project, and I'm sorry that's sort of dim, um, you can see of course here, I got a little pointer, ooh that doesn't even show up. Is it there? Oh there it is, little tiny dot, okay, there's Washington State. And then you can see Puget Sound here. And this box up here is the, where the project generally is located. And of course here, we have uh, Bellingham Bay, we have uh, Bellingham where we're sitting right now. For orientation up here is Blaine. This green uh, area here, that is not the entire project area. The green represents uh, heavy impact industrial zoning. But this outlined area here in red is the area associated with the project. And it is about 1,200 acres that are uh, uh, the area associated with the SSA project. They are, last I saw, I haven't seen the most recent application, but uh, planning to develop approximately 350 acres. Uh, the other portion of um, both projects we're going to be looking at, as you saw in the overhead, we talked about the Burlington Northern uh, Santa Fe Custer Spur. That is a line here, where's my dot? Where is it? Oh, there it is, okay. That's, that's so embarrassing to have like 800 people see the dot before I do. Um, You've got a six mile line approximately that will be put in. Uh, there will be wetland fill associated with that. Uh, all of this property right now is undeveloped, uh, to my knowledge. Is that right, Tyler? Existing rail line, there will be a second line. Thank you. Okay, so a uh, photograph, uh, just sort of an image of just so people can sort of visualize the project. I mean, what you have here is, it will be the exportation. It's a, bu a dry bulk commodities export facility. The estimate that was listed for the amount of coal to be exported would be at full build out, 54 million tons of coal. And uh, there could be other commodities that are going to be exported. This circle here, the large one, uh, is, is the uh, coal storage area. The smaller loop over here to your left uh, is a covered area that could be used for other commodities. Those commodities would be sent out on the trestle that you see here, that's the straight line coming out. And the war a wharf would be constructed, uh, it's planned for three berths. So that's the proposed general project. So now let's move to the next slide. Let's talk about the key agencies that are involved with the NEPA SEPA process. There are co-leads, there's three of us, federal, state, local level. I've been in ecology for, for many, many years. I have never worked on a project that had three co-leads. So that tells you how unique this project is. Uh, the co-leads are Whatcom County, Department of Ecology, my agency, state agency, and the uh, Corps of Engineers. Uh, Wacom's the lead on SEPA. Oh, uh, the Corps, of course, has NEPA responsibilities. Wacom County asked the Department of Ecology in the state to be co-leads, and we agreed to be so. Why three of us? And why are we all working together? And the reason is we want to integrate the review process. We don't want to have two parallel processes that the public will have to be tracking. We hope and it will avoid duplication of effort and provide comprehensive review. And of course, we'd be collaborating and issuing a combined NEPA-SEPA document. 
and it'll be holistic. We're not going to have parts of it color-coded for SEPA and parts for NEPA. It will be a comprehensive document that will cover the requirements of both sets of regulations. All right, what about our roles and responsibilities? Whatcom County, they will review the project for compliance with SEPA. But they also have a unique role as the administrative lead for SEPA review. In the regulations, it's called a nominal lead, but we follow a number of the administrative requirements that are in Whatcom code and uh, requirements for SEPA. Ecology will be ensuring regional and statewide effects are addressed. Because of our role as a state agency, that we extend beyond the boundary of Bellingham and Whatcom is the reason that we are participating in this as a co-lead. And the Corps, of course, reviews the project for compliance with NEPA, and they are the administrative lead for NEPA. All right, now, um, here we have this, this colored graph. Now, we had, we had had an attempt here. It obviously failed. We were gonna have two large slides so that you could track this, this process all the way through Tyler's and my presentation. Uh, these will be, this entire slide presentation will be on our websites so that you will have it. Hopefully you don't have to take a lot of notes tonight. Uh, we'll have the color versions for you. But what I want to cover here is basically what the steps are in the NEPA SEPA process for the Gateway Pacific Terminal uh, Burlington Northern project. Now I have under there, and I want you to note, dates are approximate. I wanted exclamation points. My public information officer said no exclamation points, but I still want to make it very clear this timeline that we are defining is a rough estimate, please. It's based on our experience with large projects, other SEPA documents that we've been involved. There are many variables that affect the timeline, so I want that to be very clear to people. So let's, I'll, I'll just talk about color coding. We've got gray, which is 2011, what sort of happened in that time frame. The orange line is 2012, this year. Blue is 2013, green is 2014. And first I'll just sort of say, overview what the boxes are in general. The gray, we've done some preliminary project review. For example, the Corps already determined significant impacts likely. We know that that's going to be the case for the county and, and the state. The orange, uh, we have a box for hiring a contractor. We have the informational meeting on there. That's the lower orange box. And then the larger orange box on top is begin scoping. And what that says is receive public comments, decide what factors to analyze and what geographic area to consider. That will be the key for this evening. And then after that happens, you begin preparing the draft EIS. Down the line, sometime estimate is uh, the, the draft gets worked on, it gets issued, it's open for public, public comment again. And then there will be a public hearing. And at some point, a final EIS will be issued. So now I'm going to, you know, get into each of these with a little more detail for you. First, the next two slides, I may be using some terms you don't know. Uh, and I will promise you, I will get back to identifying them. But here's where we're at in the process. OK, an application was submitted to the Corps of Engineers, the federal regu uh, regulatory agency. They made their determination of significance. By that, it's an important project. A determination of non-significance is normally for a smaller project that doesn't have significant environmental impacts. That's why it's called that. There was a co-lead agreement. Like I said, the three agencies haven't done this before. We had to work it out, and it was easy. We're, get, we're working very well together, federal, state, local. We have an agreement on how we're going to work together. We're in the process of selecting a contractor. I'm going to go into that in a minute to work on the EIS. And then uh, the application was submitted to the county, I think that was yesterday, by SSA. And that is going to be reviewed by the county. 
I'll talk about that, that some more. The next steps, the county is going to determine if that application is complete. 14 day time frame, Tyler? Okay, so the clock's ticking on those 14 days, am I right? Are they business days or working days? Or 14 days, Monday to Monday. Co-leads will issue once an application is determined to be complete. And if and only when it is determined to can be complete, the co-leads will issue notices to start the public process, the scoping process, and the environmental impact statement process. And that's when those public meetings and the scoping process will begin. All right, here's the, let me ask that woman back there, is, does, is that readable? Okay, at least I know. I, I had a blow up of this box because I felt it was very important for a public meeting. We're hiring a contractor. We may use the terms interchangeable, consultant, contractor. Whatcom County, with input from the co-lead agencies, hires a contractor to help prepare a public participation plan and an EIS. The funding must be provided by the applicant. This is a very common step in large projects. You have a contractor who helps do and produce and develop the EIS, and they work at the direction of the three co-leads. They do not work at the direction of the applicant, even though the applicant needs to pay for it. They're required to pay for it. So this is an important step and an important person and people, that's actually a whole team, that you will be seeing in future meetings that relate to the public process. One of the key things they're going to produce is a public participation plan. It's going to provide information on public in involvement. Now, we got ahead of that a little. It would have been easy to have said, oh God, let's please let the consultant do this. No, it was time to have this meeting to inform you of the process, but they will be working on how to further engage you and in a very uh, systematic way. It will clearly outline the public process and guide the implementation of the scoping process. So you will see a contractor as it relates to the scoping process and they will be working with the co-leads. Part of what they'll be producing is tools for project websites. Ecology has a website on Gateway Pacific Terminal. You just, you know, look up our website. It's on the handout. We have basic information there. The county has the same thing. I think with a, consul a consultant, a contractor, those uh, efforts will be enhanced.